All right, so let's just say, for example, you wanted more control with your with your API. Because right now, what we're doing is we're returning find customer. But obviously, there's many different scenarios that could happen with your controller. The controller could return a 200 or a 400 status code. You never know, right? That's why we need to make sure that we are handling that appropriately. So let's just say, for example, uh, we instead of just returning a customer all the time, let's say if the customer can't be found, what do we do then? We want to return a 404. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and inside the service class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create an array. And I'll just call this users. So actually, wait. So that. Okay, uh, private Yeah, there we go. That's better. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just put some users in here. So ID is it's one email Danny at gmail.com and then created at there we go. Copy and paste it a couple times. So one uh, do Adam and we'll just create one more and we'll do uh spencer okay that's good enough and what we're going to do is we're going to completely get rid of this find customer method and we're going to re-implement a new one so find customer is going to take in an id the id is going to be a numeric value so data type is going to be number so we'll type annotate that and what we're going to do is we're going to basically just create a simple search for this uh for this user's array so we basically want to find the uh, appropriate user that matches this uh, the ID. Okay, well, let me actually call this find customer by ID. Okay, now what we want to do is we're going to return users.find and we're going to pass in a predicate. So we want to find it by the ID. So we'll pass in a predicate where we are going to check to see if user.id is equal to ID. So if the user is found, it'll actually return that record from the array. If it's not found, it should just return uh, undefined. So what we'll do is we'll actually modify uh, this endpoint so that um, what we'll do is we'll actually expect the customer or expect the user who's using this API to give us an ID. Okay. So we have the id so the colon id so it's very similar to express when it comes to route parameters you just denote it with a colon and to actually get the route parameter you can actually do it the express way so what you can actually do is you can actually use the request uh, decorator and we'll call this rec and you can actually type annotate this request uh, object using the uh, request interface that comes from express you can see that it literally comes from express and we can also use the response decorator and we can type annotate the response object using the response interface from express as well. Okay. And so this actually can give you more control with the request. So for example, you can actually literally do the same thing that you do in express. You can reference the request body. You can reference the headers. You can reference the cookies, whatever it is that you want. If you wanted to get the params, you can do rec.params, okay? If you want to send a 200 status code, you could do res.send200. If you want to send a 403, you can do it as well. So this is a way how you can get more control with your, uh, with your, uh, with your uh, controller, okay? So let's go ahead and do this real quick. So what we want to do essentially is we want to actually get the uh, we want to make sure that we are getting the uh, route parameter. Now there's many ways that we can do that. We can do it the express way by doing rec .params and then reference ID. But let's do it the nest JS way. So to do it the nest JS way, we can use the param decorator. Okay, and what we do is we specify the name of the parameter. So it's ID without the colon inside the uh, parentheses of param, okay? And then what we can do is we can uh, give it a name, so id, and we can specify the type. Now, by default, it's actually going to be a string. Uh, so if I were to actually pass an id, 
Oh, well, so since we're type annotating it, that's fine because it will do the conversion. But if you actually were to do type of ID, you'll see that in the console, it should log string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually just uh, I'm with this out for now. And I just want to show you guys how this works. So if I refresh, it should just say cannot get. But if I pass in an ID, and if I look at the console, you'll see that it says string. Okay, now one thing that I'm going to just cover really quickly is you can actually use what's called a pipe and we'll go more in depth in this in, in a uh, in the next in the next several tutorials on what pipes are but if you pass in parse into pipe what this will do is it will literally transform the data type uh the the value like the data type value of this id from a string to a number okay so you'll actually get a number so even though you are type annotating this as a number it's actually not really a number Okay, so to be safe, you should definitely uh, use the parse in pipe. But don't worry so much about that right now because we'll go more in depth about pipes later. So now you can see that it actually logs a number. So that's good. Cool. So let's go ahead and what we'll do is we will call find customer ID. Now, typically this should be some asynchronous function, but right now, since we are uh, we don't really have any asynchronous operations. We will not worry about that for now. So this is all synchronous. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and do const customer equals this dot customer service dot find customer by ID. And at the control level, what we could do is we can say if customer was found. Okay. We can go ahead and set uh, or we can call res dot send customer. By default, it should just give us a two hundred status code. Let's say if the customer was not found, we can go ahead and actually send a, uh, well, let's set the status to 400, and we can send a message saying customer not found. Let's do, uh, yeah, let's, let's do 400. That's good enough. Okay. So now if I go over here, if I refresh, you can see that we found the customer. If I give in a, if I, if I pass in an ID that actually is not in that array, you can see that it says customer not found. So literally we can do this with with uh with nest.js now this is kind of doing this uh very closely it's very similar to how you do it in express i'm going to show you guys how we can do this using the nest.js way okay so let me go ahead and uh create another route and this will literally just be the same logic we're just gonna i'm just gonna show you guys how i would do it the nest.js way let's go ahead and just call this route customers slash search and we'll have that id parameter and I'll call this search customer by ID okay so first off uh, we actually don't even need to uh, we actually don't even need this request object so just having this is actually kind of useless and also when you test your code when you unit test you're going to also need to mock another request object or stub it out so it adds like extra stuff that you have to add into your your controllers so one of the nice things with Nest is that we actually, instead of using like the request object, we don't necessarily need it all the time unless we really needed it. But most of the time, you probably won't ever really need the request object. And we'll get into that later. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the same param decorator. I'm going to pass in the name of the parameter, so ID. And we're going to use the parse int pipe to transform this into the correct data type. Okay. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bind the customer. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll say const customer equals this dot customer service dot my customer by B. And what I'm going to do is let's say, for example, if the customer has been found, we'll, we'll return the customer. Okay, now one thing to note that is if you actually use the request or the request and the response uh, objects in your controller, you actually need to use those to send the response back. You cannot just return the object. Okay, so if I if I actually, for example, let's say for example, if I have uh, if I have the response object here, I need to actually explicitly call res.send. I can't just do return customer. Okay. So, but over here, since we're not using the request or the response object, we can, or, or we're not using either one of them, we can actually just return the customer. If the customer is not found, 
Uh, we can actually just throw. We can actually just throw a new HTTP exception. And what this will do is this will allow us to actually uh, send a response back to the user uh, without actually ex without actually using the response object itself. So we can give a message. So let's just say customer not found. And we can give it a status code. So you can hard code the status code to 400 if you want. But Nest.js has an enum called HTTP status. And it has a bunch of different status codes. Okay, so the one that we want is probably a uh, say bad request. All right, so let's go ahead and test out this endpoint. And so right now, this one, this is the endpoint that we had from before. Let's add customers slash search. So you can see that this one, uh, it says validation failed numeric string is expected. Okay, so let's go ahead and provide a string. So you can see that we get a customer back. So that logic is working just fine. Let's go ahead and pass in four, and you're gonna see that it gives us a status code of 400. But now if we look at the network tab, you can see that it in fact actually does give us a 400, which is very useful for libraries such as Fetch and Axios, because by default, they will actually, uh, it will actually reject the promise if there is a bad request or a status code of 400 or 500. Okay, so that's good. If I go into network tab, you can see that if I refresh, we have a 400 request and that is very good. So that is going to be pretty much it for this tutorial. I just wanted to show you guys how we can implement this the Nest.js way. So instead of having the request and response uh, parameters, you can just literally um, avoid that, get the actual uh, uh, path variable, find the customer, return the customer if it's found or throw an error. And that will actually give us back the appropriate uh, status code to the client okay so that's going to be pretty much it for this tutorial so in the next tutorial i'm going to show you guys how we can implement the rest of the other uh you know um, methods for http such as post put uh, patch delete they're very simple nothing too complicated and then we're going to play around a little bit more with controllers and services just so that you guys can understand a lot better and then we'll, we'll move into the more advanced stuff and the more uh, cool stuff that nest.js has to offer. So I'll see you guys in that video. Peace out.